Hey guys, it's Aaron. A few weeks ago, I put out a video showing three ways to create a pyramid. Um, you guys seem to like it, talked about it a lot, and uh, you weren't shy about stepping up and letting me know the additional ways of creating pyramid that I didn't mention. So it was, it was very sweet of you to come out in force and tell me what I had forgotten. I appreciate it. I really do. Um, <laughs> no, it's good. That's a good thing. I need to be reminded of, of these sorts of things. Um, anyhow, there was quite a few different ways you could make pyramids. Some of the recommendations I didn't quite understand, but uh, there were three in particular that I thought were great ideas that I didn't include. So this is three more ways to make a pyramid in SketchUp using only native tools. So let's hop in, take a look at that right now. All right, so I'm gonna start with a rectangle and I'm gonna throw this on the ground for the first one. Uh, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna do, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna make all of these pyramids the same size at the end. So we'll go about different methods of making them, but they'll all end up exactly the same. So I'm gonna start with a 10 foot comma 10 foot square. Uh, for this one, I'm going to pull it up. Let's see, how tall do we wanna go? I don't know, how about seven feet? There we go. For no particular reason, seven feet. All right, now what I'm gonna do is just draw lines up to the peak. So really all I need to do is figure out where the peak is. So I'm gonna go ahead and just draw an X like this. Now this point right here is the peak. So what I can do is I can just draw a line from this corner to the peak, this corner, to the peak, and as I'm doing this, I am creating geometry, even though it's inside. So I can't see it right now, but I am creating geometry. If I peek real quick inside, you can see that's what I'm doing. I'm actually stitching together a pyramid inside of this square, this extruded rectangle. So I click right there, and you see a bunch of faces are showing up, bunch of surface, I'm creating faces in here uh, this triangle right here is a surface, this one in here, this, this triangle. So I create a bunch of extra geometry. So what I need to do now is just chip away the extra. So if I just delete each of these corners, what I'll end up with is there's my pyramid. So I do have some front and back face issues. What I'm gonna do is just right click on one of the correct faces and hit orient faces. This is just made out of five pieces, so it's pretty easy for SketchUp to figure out where the outside is. And there we go. So that was actually some one of the first ones that was recommended, and that works great. And that's quick, easy to do, just a couple of clicks. So the next one that I saw, I was remiss to point out because it does use my very favorite SketchUp native command, which is follow me. And I didn't point this out, and I kind of got called out on it. I accept that. Uh, so one of the things I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use inferencing. I'm gonna hover over this corner, I'm gonna slide over here, and see there's that dotted line. Not that I have to, but I just wanna keep my, uh, my pyramids in a nice row here. So if I come up and inference off of this point, as I pull out, I don't have to type in 10, 10 again, I just wait till a dotted line shows up telling me that I'm creating a square. Now if I look in the lower right dimension, I can see that that is 10 feet by 10 feet, so I can click. So I don't have to go in and type in dimensions a second time. Same with push-pull. I turn on push-pull, I can click at the bottom, move up, let it align to the top. So if I wanted to create that cube again, I could do it just like that. So I don't actually have to come in and put any more dimensions in, because based on this first pyramid, I have all the dimensions I need. In this case, I'm using follow me, of course, so I'm not gonna do that. What I am gonna do is I'm just gonna grab a standard line, and I'm gonna draw a line from the edge right here down to the middle. Now, a couple ways I could do this, I could come and inference off of the midpoint of one of these edges, or you can see as I'm pulling down right here, because I've inferenced this point before, it's holding it as a potential inference point and telling me that's the middle. So I can click right there. Now I can come up the blue line, and again, that same inference point, just move my mouse up the blue line, clicks right there, and then click down below. So what I've created is half that profile, and now it's real simple, because all I gotta do is use double click on the surface, that's gonna highlight all the edges, follow me, and then click that new surface, and there we go. Obviously, the issue with this one is, well, two issues. It's got no bottom, so I can fix that quick enough. How would I go about fixing that? Let me just show you this. 
The problem was it pulled this surface over existing surface. So if I get rid of this surface and then just select my edges, now if I hit follow me and click right here, there we go. I have a closed bottom there. Um, that's why a lot of times when I do follow me, I try to keep my path disconnected from the shape I'm actually using. All right, I'm going to triple click, right click, and reverse faces. There we go. Two pyramids, exactly the same size, created using different methods. Let's do one more. All right, for this one, I'm just going to use the line tool. I'm going to come across and draw a line that's the same length as the pyramids. That's my 10-foot length. And then I'm going to draw another line from the midpoint straight up to the peak. So basically, I'm getting the 2D profile of that 3D shape. So just a triangle like that. All right, so if I look out, it should line up perfectly, but it is 2D. All right, delete that line in the middle and use push-pull to pull that across. Bigger than whatever the full length of the, the uh, finished pyramid is going to be. Now, I'm going to triple click. That's going to highlight everything. And I'm going to go into rotate. With rotate, I'm going to go hover over the middle point. Now, what rotate does, it does end up like aligning to surfaces and that sort of thing. But I want to force it with the up arrow key on my keyboard to rotate along the blue axis, so along the flat ground. And I'm going to click in the middle. I'm going to click out on the edge. I'm going to hit the modifier key to make a copy and rotate that 90 degrees like that. All right, so what we've done is we now have two push-pulled triangles crossing each other. I'm going to select that whole thing, and I'm going to say intersect face with selection, and there's my cut line. See those lines show up around the edges? Once again, all I have to do now is get rid of this extra geometry. The quickest way is going to be to double-click on the end here, hit delete, delete, Double click delete, double click delete, and unfortunately, we do have a little bit of hand erasing we have to do. Unless you like that, it looks like a sketchy architectural style with those lines trailing off on the edge there. But there we go. Using that method, we created yet another pyramid that looks exactly like the other ones. Now, I could have also done this with solid, so when I push pulled those. Uh, triangles, I could have selected and made them groups then, and then I could use solid tools to create an intersection between the two and got the same geometry. Actually, it would have been a little bit, well, I don't know, it would have been quicker. You get to group it beforehand, but then you wouldn't have had to do the cleanup afterwards, so uh, your call on that one. So there we go. That's three more ways to create a pyramid using just SketchUp native tools. I want to throw a thank you out to any of those commenters on YouTube who mentioned the different ways that I hadn't remembered to show in the first video. I made a joke about being called out, but in reality, it's one of the things I love about SketchUp is there's so many ways to do the same thing. Uh, it really comes down to preference. What do you like best? It does make me wonder, though, are there three more ways that we could do that? Are there nine total ways to create a pyramid? Twelve? Leave a comment down below if you can think of a way to create a pyramid that I haven't shown in the last two videos. Uh, maybe we'll make this a series. We'll have a, just a whole, we'll create our own like just topic of videos that are just creating pyramids over and over in different ways. Um, no, I'm kidding, but it would be interesting to think of all the different ways we could go about creating a pyramid. Leave a comment down below if you can think of something, and uh, maybe I'll throw that into the next video we create. If you haven't already, go ahead and click like down below if you enjoyed this video and subscribe. We create a couple of videos a week around here and we'll let you know when they're released if you subscribe to our channel. Most importantly, like I said, leave a comment. This whole video was created because of comments left on the previous Making Pyramid video that I created. I like making these videos a lot, but we like making them a lot more when they're showing something you want to see. Thank you.